kind of like um, if I walked into your office at school and your filing cabinet had no folders in it um, and your desk had four inches of papers on it, um, I could do the same thing analog, right? Like that's what we're trying to do here. Um, we're trying to keep you organized and trying to make it so it, when you come back to school in the fall, whatever that looks like, uh, you know where things are and you have systems in place to manage. Um, so my whole thing on this is based on the fact that I was a high school teacher. Uh, this is my first full year finishing this job, but I was a high school teacher and I managed a lot of uh, student work that was submitted to me online, even though we weren't in a pandemic. Um, and, and trying to manage all of that now that we work from home for three months, I can imagine some of us, it just it absolutely exploded. Um, it's a tedious task to sometimes reorganize this, but once you get on top of it, let me tell you, uh, my, my stress level looking at my email, my drive is a lot less than probably some other people in this, in this meeting. So um, the first thing, I'm actually going to share my screen with you. Uh, so I'm going to move you all to another monitor. And I'm going to share up here. Just give me a second. And the first thing I'm going to do before I even get into Gmail, which is where I'm going to live um, for a little while, is I'm going to talk about the Chrome browser, which a lot of people, uh, almost everybody I'm sure, uses the Chrome browser, but um, maybe we don't use it as efficiently as we can. So uh, I actually have an extension called Wakelet. So when, you, when I open a new tab, I get this screen. Uh, and if, I, if I'm logged in, you'll see, you would see some collections and things from Wakelet. Um, but this isn't a Wakelet webinar. So uh, the two or three things I want to share with you about uh, how I organize when I use Google Chrome is I, the first thing is pinning tabs. Uh, so I always pin my email and when I'm in the office or when I have a lot of appointments, I always pin my calendar right next to it. Uh, so all I'm doing is I take that and I right click on the tab and I pin it. Um, all that does is it doesn't let me accidentally close out of it. And it also forces that pin tab to the left hand side. So it's always in the corner. Uh, so now I don't even really think about it. Like my uh, muscle memory takes me to my left hand corner and goes to my email uh, pretty much just as a habit because it's been pinned up there for so long. Also, when you X out of a Chrome tab, this won't work because I've got four tabs, four windows open, but when you X out and you come back, your pin tab stays. All right, so it's really only helpful for like your go-tos. Like for me, it's email and calendar, Google Calendar. Uh, for you, it might be something else, but probably email. Uh, so that, that's my first little trick. If you've never right clicked on a tab, which I think a lot of us maybe never did, pin is really helpful. All right. If you accidentally close a tab, you can get it back. I don't know. Uh, I learned this one more recently than I care to admit, but Control, Shift, and T. If I accidentally close out a tab, if I hit those three keys, Control, Shift, T, it'll bring the tab back that I closed, which is a, a game changer. All right. So um, pin tab, that's my first one. My second one is your little extensions right here. Uh, you probably don't have Hopefully you don't have as many as I do, but you can just slide this. If you click and slide, you can slide and show as many as you like. So if you have, you know, like 15 or so, and you're tired of always looking at all those little icons because you don't really use them that much, um, you know, drag them around and reorganize them how you would like, okay? And then I always shrink, oops, I don't want that to be a bookmark. I always shrink that back down to like my two or three that I actually use all the time. The other ones are just right in that three dots. They're all right there. If you have as many as I do, uh, I actually have this thing called extension manager for my extensions, uh, which is comical. Um, but it helps me turn extensions on and off. So I, I have, you know, that's one of my jobs is to kind of vet extensions and make sure uh, we have the right ones turned on. And so I, I end up getting a lot of those. So. Um, Jason, I have a question already. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing your screen uh, when you're presenting screen, but I'm seeing it as a little tiny window, little tiny window. So I'm not able to follow what you're doing. What mm -hmm. do I need to do to fix that? Yeah, good question. Um, you can do a couple things. If you have that grid view extension turned on, uh, yeah. like in the top right, I would click yeah. that. I would just click on that little icon that looks like a waffle and, yeah. turn, and turn it off. 
for right okay, now. Okay, just get that. Okay, good. Okay. And it, it should make that screen bigger, did it? It did. Thank you. No problem. Oh, I need to put out my attendance. I'm horrible at these types of things. I got called by the office every day for for six years as a high school teacher. Like, uh, fill out your attendance, Jason. <laughs> it's no different in this. So, uh, just pop your first name and last name in there so I can put the attendance into Frontline for you so you get your hour credit. One out of 180, one down, 179. Put, put it in where? Uh, I just put that in the chat. Did you get that little? Yeah, okay, I'm looking for it then. Yeah, I see the it. And uh, put, pop okay. your first and last name into that form. I see a bunch of responses going in right now. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Uh, my other thing real quick that is really helpful for me um, is having all of my bookmarks without a bunch of words after them, right? Sometimes I have folders and things in my bookmarks to organize them. And admittedly, my bookmarks aren't as organized as they should be, but I always use my, my go-to my go -to, uh, bookmarks that I know the icons to, like I know this is Flipgrid, I know this is Frontline. Um, the way I do that is when I go to a site, let's say there's not much going on on ESPN these days, but let's say um, I wanted to bookmark ESPN. Wouldn't do that. I would never do something non-academic during work hours. So hear that from me first. Um, and I click the little star. Uh, where it says name, just get rid of the name altogether. Uh, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to host it in the bookmarks bar. Now the problem is it, it went all the way to the bottom and now I got to pull back the veil a little bit and sh show you how it's bad guys. There's a lot of bookmarks I haven't organized, right? This one part of my organization that really has fallen through the cracks, but here's ESPN, right? So if ESPN had a little icon, which I'm sure it does right now, it's showing up as a globe, but I, I would almost guarantee that if I refresh my browser and come back in, it's going to show up as their little E instead of it showing up. Um, with all those words after it. So I can fit a bunch more bookmarks on, there it is, there's the E. I can fit a bunch more bookmarks on my uh, bar across and um, it, it just is really helpful to me. Um, the folders, the reason why my bookmarks are so unorganized um, is because I'm actually trying to move them off of using Google Chrome bookmarks because I don't think they're really helpful. Um, Wakelet is a tool that does that really well. And then also our Destiny Collections, is, is, those are two tools. Uh, there were webinars on those today, um, so I'm not going to go into huge detail on those, but that's my goal is to merge them off of actually the Chrome bookmark bar because I, I am not good at using that, as you can tell. Like, there are far too many bookmarks there, right? So that's that's those are my tips for keeping like this uh, toolbar at the top really organized um, and it seems to work pretty well for me if you if you're on a bookmark site and you want to get rid of it you just click the star and click remove so now that bookmark's gone because I don't really need that all right everybody good so far thank you Tina yeah if you if you wrote your name in the chat make sure you put it in that Google form uh, that I put if you need me I can paste it in the chat again <laughs> All right, so I'm going to jump into Gmail. I'm going to go through a bunch of features. So, some you're probably familiar with, some you're not. My whole goal at the end of every single day is that my inbox has zero emails in it. So that's my goal. Every single day my inbox has zero emails. If you're one of the people who your inbox has thousands and thousands, not only unread, but just thousands and thousands of emails, um, this, you got to fix it. That has to give you a little bit of anxiety, right? So right now you can tell I... Um, Holy cow. So I cleared out my email at noon, right? I had no emails at noon, and right now I've got 17. That's not that bad, actually, for running a conference PD today. Uh, so by the end of the day, I'm hoping that will be back to zero, right? But this will give you some stuff to look at. So how do I get my inbox down to zero? Well, the first thing I do is I move things to labels when I'm done with them. All right, so uh, let's say... Uh, this conversation I'm having with Rachel. Once I respond to Rachel, I don't need that to just sit in my inbox anymore. I've responded to her. If she's going to respond back, I'm going to get an email back in my inbox. So it will populate again. Uh, so I've 
pretty much completed the task of talking to Rachel, which is great. At that point, I'm just going to drag it to whatever folder I need it to be in, whatever label. Uh, so Rachel's a BTC, so I'd probably drag that into BTC information. And I, and I just kind of, that conversation's out of sight, out of mind. It's not gone. I didn't delete it because I would like to keep that just in case I need to reference it at some point. Um, but I don't ever have to really worry about it coming up and looking and trying to sift through that email when I'm looking for more important things, right? Uh, so that's my first tip is anytime you respond to people, clear it out of your inbox. I know it's a hard habit if you've never done it before, right? Um, if you're wondering about these, these labels, um, what I have, what I have done here is I've created a, a system for myself that makes a lot of sense. So I kind of organize it by departments and then I, I subset labels inside of those that maybe are more pertinent. So, um, I'm actually part of the staff development team in curriculum at DSC, but I work really closely with the tech department. Uh, so I need a folder for each of those groups of people because of the nature of my job. When I was a teacher, it looked like this. So I actually have an entire, I have all my old emails saved right here, right? Uh, I have admin things, I have stuff related to math, uh, and then you can kind of see, I, I was on SSC for a while, student communication, parent communication, and that's how I organize myself, all right? Um, I saw somebody ask me about labels versus folders. It's really weird the way that um, Gmail organizes it. They're all called labels, so some, you can move things into labels and actually move them out of your inbox, or you can just add multiple labels to them. For me personally, adding, like, if I have, I'm com communicating with Derek, I don't need that to be in four different places. It's really a lot easier for me to just move it into one place. I could click on this and add as many labels as I wanted to this one email, um, but for me, that's not, that's not very helpful. might be for you, but it's not. All right. Uh, if you want to add more labels, there's a million ways to add labels, but when I click on more down here and create new label, that's the easiest way to do it. All right. Uh, I use these numbers called Unicode numbers because uh, normally that is sorted alphabetically. Uh -oh, starting to rain. And, um, and alphabetically doesn't do me much good because just because it comes first in the alphabet doesn't mean it's what I use the most, right? So you can see double zeros, distance learning questions. As you can imagine in my position, I've had a lot of those emails over the past few months. So I created a new label and I just sent everything that was related to remote learning into that folder or into that label, I'm sorry, into that label. And, and now I can go back and reference all of that, but it's all organized for me. Um, the Unicode numbers I use, Unicode's just like these weird looking emoji numbers, right? Uh, let me share the link with you. So I just use something like this. I don't know if I use this exact site every time. Um, and I just copy and paste these little numbers. See those right there? I just, I just grab that and I do control C and then I paste it into my um, label and then they're organized by those numbers. So it's really easy for me to keep track of them. You can also put in emoji. So like um, if, if you're a big emoji person, you can put in like, like under my teacher request, I have a dinosaur. I don't know why, but um, you can, you can add those as well. Uh, so if, if that's, um, if you're having a hard time organizing those labels, I recommend, you know, numbering them or something like that to try to keep them organized. How do you delete old folder? Okay. So if you want to get rid of one, you just click on the three dots right there and you just remove the label. All right. Now, here's my suggestion for you. If you want to get rid of, um, oh, good question. Uh, if you want to rename a label, you just click on the three dots and you can edit it right here. You can also change the color of it right there and you can customize the color. And then you can also show or hide the label. So, like, I have more labels than what you're seeing. Um, and I don't. I don't need I don't need more than that right now. Jody, you asked, is there a way I usually have context by class and sometimes I can only see part of it. Yeah, I don't know how to make that part of it larger. It's really it is really inconvenient. When I, I have a really wide screen at home, uh, 
so usually I just when I'm on that wider screen I can see everything but like on a Chromebook it does kind of cram it in there sometimes doesn't it um, and then inside of a label you can like nest things right so if you have like for example I'm in staff development but I also have communication with other people uh, whenever I nest things I try to keep them all the same color uh, I'm really big on color coding things I think it helps um, I think it really helps my brain organize information. So like now every time I see red in this or in Google Drive, it instantly thinks of my team. It takes a while, but um, for me it works really well. So like I try to match the folder colors in, or the label colors in Gmail to things that are similar in my Google Drive. That really helps me out. All right, so that's, that's kind of labels. I'm gonna jump into these settings right here. Uh, because there's a couple settings that I have set up that uh, I'm guessing don't look like your screens and I want to make sure that you know where they came from before I come back to my inbox real quick. All right, so I'm going to go settings. I'm going to go into settings gear. And this is super overwhelming. The first time I clicked on this, I thought I, I must be in the wrong spot. There's, there's far too many things in here, right? But, um, oh, how do you nest labels? I'll show you that in just a second. We can do it from right here too. Um, so here's a, here's a few settings that I'm gonna I'm gonna really recommend you you look at. So the first one, uh, maximum page size. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go through and you're gonna have to delete a bunch of old emails, and I'm gonna give you an, a suggestion on how to find old emails and delete them. Uh, I would set that to 100 conversations a page. And the reason I would set it to 100 conversations a page is because you can select all the conversations on a single page, so 100 at a time, and delete them all. If you only have 20, uh, 20 or 25 shown, on, that's going to take you four or five times as long just to do what I'm, what I'm talking about. So I like the 100 conversations per, per page. Undo send. Again, this is something I learned about once I started my job. I wish I would have known uh, my new job. I wish I would have known it. But you can actually set this up to 30 seconds. So if you uh, accidentally send something, your, your email, you have a chance to undo it. You have a little button in the bottom left corner that will say undo for 30 whole seconds. That email actually won't get sent for 30 whole seconds after you click the send button. So it can be great for us who forget an attachment or forget a link uh, and we're looking at the email after we send it and we realize that, right? That's when you actually edit it after you send it. That's how it works. I'm not sure why that, the human brain does that, but that's how my brain works. Uh, so I actually have mine set at 10 seconds because I can usually catch something by then. Uh, when I talk to new teachers and mentor teachers, uh, this default text style is actually really, really important. I think some people think the default text style is just for them, right? It's not uh, what everybody sees, but this is what everybody sees, right? So if you set it to like a, a playful font, super large text because it's hard for you to see, and your favorite color, but it's not a great color for text like yellow, um, you might think that looks rocking but it probably is not the greatest. So, you know, let's go with simple font, regular text. Um, and I, I try to get ahead of this and just say it out loud because it, it, it's not always a conversation you'd want to have with a coworker if you're, it's hard to see their email and might offend them or anything. So I'll, I'll be the bad guy and I'll offend people. But, you know, that's what everybody sees, not just what you see. Some of these like grammar suggestions, spelling suggestions, autocorrect, smart compose, those just make it easier for you to send emails. Uh, I need all of it. I need all the help I can get. I'm a math teacher. So uh, I need all of that turned on because I like when it finishes my sentences for me. That's really nice. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling down here. Uh, okay, I use these stars a lot. So if, if you've never messed with, with these stars before, uh, you probably just have a couple of them defaulted on there, or maybe just the yellow star defaulted on there. So I actually use um, three of the icon stars, the check mark, the exclamation point, and the question mark. And, and I'll show you exactly where those show up in my inbox, but I set it up that way knowing I would use those three stars. Um, so in your brain, you want to think like, what are the types of emails that I get that I need to respond to? Uh, and that's kind of what I set it up as. So check mark means I'm good to go. I can't delete this email yet. There's information in there, but I don't really need to do an action step. Exclamation point means that um, there's something that's pretty urgent, and I should probably not forget this email before I leave. 
work because I don't always get to inbox zero. And then question mark means somebody's asked me a direct question. I just need to answer it. Helps me out a lot. Um, my button labels are text because I don't know what all the icons mean in Gmail. And I'm guessing if you're in this session, you probably don't know either. Uh, so the text is really helpful. Um, and then there's a new feature here. Uh, so you can set up your signature, right? And my suggestion if you have a signature is that you put the building that you work in and you also put your position and an extension. Um, your sphere knows who you are, but um, like when I first started my job, the number of emails I got from people and it would just say like, Jason, and then I like had no idea who this person was. I didn't know how to really find them. So I got really good at looking people up on Infinite Campus. Uh, but it's a lot easier if I can just scroll down to the bottom of your email and see like, oh, you're a fourth grade teacher and you work at this building. Um, so it is super, super helpful if you, can, if you can include just some basic information, even though you probably think in your world, everybody already knows who you are, right? Um, so just think maybe other people would want to know too. And then I really like this, this is brand new. You can create a new signature. So I have a reply signature that doesn't have my little scrolling GIF of my badges, right? It's a little bit obnoxious, I know that. Uh, so when I'm replying back and forth to people, they don't need to see my badges every single time. Uh, but I, I don't mind having all the other information in there. Um, maybe your reply signature is just your name, right? So that can be uh, really helpful to you as well. And that's, that's a pretty new feature, like in the last couple of months. And then if you ever wondered how people uh, set up like an auto response, it's this vacation responder, right? You can turn it on for the days and you can send a message that says like, I'm out of the office, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. That's where that, that's where that lives. Um, make sure you click save changes at the bottom. If you just did anything that I just showed you, click save changes. Um, that, or else you're gonna be really disappointed, right? All right. And then I'm going to jump over to a couple of these other ones, if, if you'll let me. I told you this is just, you know, nuts and bolts. I didn't, I, I didn't claim it was going to be, you know, riveting content. Uh, I'm distracted by the absolute downpour outside right now. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go into my little labels here in settings because uh, sometimes it's easier to organize your labels if, if you have a, like a million of them over here. Sometimes it's hard to work over here and it's a little bit easier to, to organize them in this, in this setting. So um, I've hid a bunch of labels that are set up by Gmail that I can't get rid of, um, but I don't need them, right? Like I use my inbox, I use the sent mail, I use the drafts, and I use the trash. I don't really use any of the other stuff. It doesn't mean it's gone, I just don't really use it. So I'm just not going to, it's not going to clutter all this up here, like if you notice, I just have those four that I just said, right? It's really helpful. And then I don't use any of the categories in Gmail. I don't, I don't find that to be helpful for me. Uh, maybe it'd be helpful in a personal email, but I don't get a lot of social and promotions in my uh, work life. Maybe I'm in the wrong sphere, um, but I, so I hide all those. Probably you do too. Um, so right now, uh, here are all my labels I've created, right? You can also see how many conversations you have in those, right? So. You, you can see how many I've put in each one of these. Um, you can see show and message list right here. So all of mine are shown, but if I want to, I can start hiding these if I would like. I can remove them from here. I can change the name of them from here. I can also create a new label. So if I create a new label, uh, so let's say I want to do techno day questions, right? And let's say I want that to fall under my distance learning. I can nest it right here and I can choose distance learning. Right, and now that'll be inside of that distance learning umbrella. Um, so that that's one way to nest. You can also that that same option comes up when you click new label on the left hand side. All right, so just another way where you can organize your labels. All right, and then this is an important note: removing a label will not remove the messages with that label. It just removes um, it just removes the label from them. So we still have to delete the message wherever it lives, um, and I'm going to show you how to, how to find old emails so you can delete them. All right. Uh, I want to jump over to... I, I feel like I forgot to show you one thing, and I feel really bad, but I got I to gotta make sure I didn't. I'm sorry. This is not, this is not the way I wanted it to go. 
there's one there's one specific um, setting I want to show you and I want to make sure I don't forget all right we'll just keep rolling hopefully I'll find it oh there it is right there okay so I'm in my e inbox settings right now uh, you can you can organize your inbox how you'd like so if you only like using unread messages um, or if you only like if you love the stars um, you know, set up a system that works for you. I just, I just go default, newest ones at the top. That makes a lot of sense to me. It's how I've always had an email, uh, so for me, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, this one is the one I was just trying to find, and I should have just kept going. Uh, enable reading pane. So if, if you have a wide screen, it won't work on a smaller Chromebook very well. But if you have a wide screen, I would definitely click this enable reading pane on. This thing is is really cool. I'll show you what it does um, once I get out of these settings. Okay. And then there's a couple other things in there, but I'm not going to really mess with those. I mean, there's a million settings in, in Gmail, so I'm just going with the ones that help me kind of optimize my work. All right, and then I'm going to jump all the way over to advanced here. And there's a couple of these advanced ones that I really like. Auto advanced, so instead of going back into your inbox and then clicking back into an email after every time, you can turn on auto advanced, um, and that really helps me so I don't, I, I eliminate clicks. I mean, you saw I got 20 emails in the last hour. Uh, so for me, that, that saves me a lot of clicks throughout the day. Uh, and maybe you now that since you've been working from home. Uh, I have templates turned on. I've never used them. But you, if you send the same email a bunch, you can turn on your templates. Um, I don't have custom keyboard shortcuts because I'm not good with the keyboard shortcuts in, in, in Gmail at all. And I don't like to chat on the right side because it clutters my screen. Um, but the, the, the first one, auto advance and the end templates are really helpful. All right. So let me show you a couple things on where these show up and why it helps me out. All right, cool. So the first one is the stars. It's right here in this little star, uh, column, right? So let's say Rachel has a question for me, right? And I think she actually did. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click through my three different stars until I get to the question mark. Uh, maybe I don't have time to type up a response right now, but I read the email. I know what it is. I know what I need to do, right? Um, let's say this person I already responded to, and for whatever reason, I haven't moved it out yet. I'm just going to put a check mark there. Okay, and so I just go through. If my inbox isn't empty, and I go through and I label all these things that I need to do. So. Um, it really helps me like look through my day and see like, oh gosh, I've got like 20 questions I haven't answered. I better sit down and really focus and answer these questions, right? So uh, that's how I use the stars. You can organize them by color, um, but I just organize them by the actual icon. Uh, the next, hey Gay, what's up? You're muted, but I saw you trying to talk. Oh, I There we go. How do you get to that little check mark again? Oh yeah. So in my settings gear. Yes. Um, it's called stars, which is misleading because I don't use any stars. Okay, I remember that part that you showed us. But then, how do you get it when you're in your email to oh, change? Yeah. So you should you should just be able to see you see that column that has stars in it, right? Like empty stars. Yes. So I just start clicking through. So like the first time I click, I get the first okay. icon. The second time I click, gotcha. And then the third, that's it. Thanks. Once I've labeled a star, how do you go back and find it in your list of emails? Oh, so um, once I've labeled a star, like I use that only in my inbox. So I don't actually like move it out of my inbox until I'm done answering it, and then I usually unstar it. So I just use that as like a quick moniker, tell me like what I need to do in my actual inbox. I'm wondering if I can search my, um, it, it doesn't look like you can search by star, um, but you can, there is a starred folder uh, that I have hidden, because I don't use it, so right here. And so I could go back and I could see all of the things that I've put in, put on a star if that's helpful to you. It's going to be a lot of stuff though. I don't know if that's going to load. See, so all these things, these are all the things I've ever put a star on, right? So that that would be the way I would use that is if you wanted to, you could use that star box. 
All right. Starred. Cool. Uh, the next thing I, I talked about was switching. So, your I know you can search by starred. Will that show whether or not it's a star star? It'll be like your check marks and the questions and stuff will all come up when you go to the 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 uh, little click box, like all none, red, unread, starred, unstarred, that it will. Yeah, right here. Are you talking about on the left hand side here? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so when you go up under search mail, uh, there's a little uh, box with a drop code. Yeah. Uh, no, like, not that one, but it, it's just the plain little box underneath there. Star? No. Uh, oh, it, well, it's it's just the it's the, it's a little clicky box that you can click all oh, the boxes. Yeah, 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 right here. Yeah, and then there's a drop thing that you hit starred. Yeah. Does that show anything that you've labeled as starred? It'll just highlight the ones that are labeled as start. So then you could either delete all those or move them somewhere. Uh, so that that box just just selects emails in your inbox. Yeah. So it doesn't actually organize your organizational system for stars. Just things that you've labeled. That's right. Thank you. No problem. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So a couple things that I turned on. Well, maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. The first one was to change these to words to text instead of label, uh, icons, super helpful for me. Uh, now I actually know what all those things say, <laughs> and I know how to use them, right? So I, I use the move to a lot and the delete a lot. Those are my two favorites. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I said was that pane. So I like the split pane mode a lot. If I'm on a bigger screen, of course, if I'm on a Chromebook, it's hard to see. But this will just show me the uh, emails on the left-hand side. And then on the right hand side, I can just go through and I can just toggle through all the emails. All right. So without ever having to click in and click out, I can just easily read whatever uh, was given to me. And you can also do it as a, as a vertical split or a horizontal split, which will do top and bottom. Uh, I think that's hard to read on a Chromebook, um, but, but maybe it works for you on a, on a Chromebook or on a different screen. I think I'd be better with vertical and horizontal, but that was rough for me. <laughs> um, split screen, Susan, you have to have um, in your inbox settings, you have to have enable reading pane turned on. That's what that's called. Once you have that turned on, you should get a little icon up here and you can just click on it and we'll split it. Right now, mine's right of the inbox. All right. Another thing that I love that I, uh, again, this is all, my whole goal at the end of the day is that I don't have emails in my inbox, right? And so the one of the ways that I do that really successfully is I use this snooze command, all right? So snooze just eliminates the email. It puts it in the snooze folder, um, and then it brings it back whenever you um, – want to deal with it, right? So maybe I love this Canva message, but I don't have time to deal with it. Maybe I want to deal with it tomorrow morning, right? When I start my day. So I'm just going to snooze it until tomorrow. It's going to disappear from my inbox, which to me is great. Out of sight, out of mind. Um, I don't have to worry about it. And at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm going to get an email. That same exact email is going to come right back into my inbox. Um, so you don't have to like hang on to emails that you're worried about. You know, if they're two months out, then snooze it for a day before the two months out, right? Like you don't need to think about it for two months. You just don't need to. And if you need to think about it for two months, it probably is more than an email. So um, that's kind of I, I've I've really I've really utilized uh, that snooze feature a lot, especially since um, remote learning has started. It's really helped me keep my inbox organized. I want to make sure I got everything. Uh, one, one, one other thing when you're writing an email that might help you out, uh, stay organized. And I, I've mentioned this in other webinars, so I apologize. But whenever you send an email, if you click on the arrow right there, it's similar to snooze, but it's, it's schedule send, right? So you can schedule out when you want to send an email as well. Um, I particularly like this because I don't want people to know if I'm working at 1 a.m., Right, like I want to send them the email, but I don't want them to really know that that's when I was working. Maybe 6:30 a.m. is more appropriate. Uh, so I'll schedule a send for something maybe I'm working on late at night for the next morning, 
uh, just as common, a common courtesy, like I don't want somebody to think it's, it's super urgent. Uh, they get my email at 1 a.m. and they have to think about it, right? So I'd rather them think about it during their work hours, even though maybe I'm uh, working overtime. And then the other thing um, that has been helpful for some people I know um, is the request read receipt. Uh, so all you do is you click this on and you don't actually see anything, which is kind of weird to people. But what that does is when somebody reads your email, you actually get an email back that says they've read the email and they'll be notified uh, that you had the read receipt on. So if you're looking for some accountability for communication, maybe with a family or something, and you're seeing if they've actually read the communication, that's all you want to know, um, that can be really helpful. Yeah, I archive stuff too, Jody. Um, I, I archive works really well. That's just uh, I, I don't use the archive feature really well. If you if you didn't read the chat, Jody said he archives things to use as examples. As long as you can remember who sent it when you're talking about examples, or you know what what the example was about, you know the search feature works really well. I think so. I also archive things. Sometimes I'll just create a label that says like examples, um, if I can nest it somewhere. And then that's easier for me to find. Like I, I used to have students send me work a lot. Um, so inside of my um, inside of my students folder, I actually have student communication, which includes all of my work from them. Um, the read receipt, Vaughn, the read receipt is when you're creating a message, it's really it's hidden. It's the three dots, the more options, and then it'll be checked on. It's only per email. You can't do it like it's not a setting, a native setting, right? You just do it per email. I wouldn't use that all the time, um, but it's definitely there and can be really helpful if you're struggling to get communication back. At least you can say, I know they read it. I don't know why they didn't uh, respond or something. Okay. No problem. All right, the last thing I want to show you, so let's say you've got thousands of emails, right? And you just want to start getting some, getting rid of some. I get you. I'm going to click on search mail and I'm going to click that arrow to get a bigger, an advanced search, right? So one more time, the arrow right there in search mail. And I'm going to go to this date within and I'm going to type in like 01, 01, 2015. All right, and then I can set, um, I can search just my, so if, I'm not going to search just my inbox because I don't have any emails in my inbox that are that old, right? But you might. If you never delete emails, you might. Uh, so I'm just going to search my all mail because I have, I certainly have emails that are that old. Probably don't need them anymore, right? They're five years old. Um, but maybe I still need them, right? And I'm just going to hit search here. Oh my gosh. No, no. Oh, come on, Jason. All right, let's go. I'm going to switch that. So you can see when uh, you can actually see the code for how this works, right? After 2014, 1231. It must have been when we started our Google accounts. And before that date, I must not have anything in there. I find it hard to believe. All right, so I switched out to 2016. You're too organized for your own good, Jason. I guess so. Should There's lots of emails from 2016. <laughs> okay, so you can see like, here's a 2015-2016 Southwest Educational Foundation email. How could that possibly be important to me at this point, right? Here's a Desmos training I ran in 2016. It's, at some point, that email is probably not relevant to me anymore, right? If you want to, you can go through all of them. My God, I would rather shove things in my eyeballs. But uh, what I would do if I know I have really old emails, see, I do have old stuff. I don't know why it wasn't pulling those. Um, what I would do is I'd just click this little drop down to select all of these emails, right? If they're super old, I can take a quick glance over and see, like, do I really need an Algebra 1 Chapter 4 Kahoot? <laughs> Probably not, <laughs> right? Uh, a picture of you flying. I don't even know what that means, right? So I've got all these crazy emails, uh, a 504 from five years ago. I mean, maybe I need to keep it, but... I'm guessing, um, I mean, this, these are kind of emails I got. Battlestar Galacta, whoops, I meant coordinate plane battleship. I don't need any of this, right? So 
So I'm just going to click this and I'm going to click delete. Now, for me, um, all my emails are out of my inbox, so none of this really is relevant to me. It's not like you're going to run out of storage on your email anyways, um, but just know that uh, you can search by date uh, and you can get rid of really old stuff really quickly. All right. And you can even go inside of your labels and search that. Right. So if you want to start clearing stuff out, um, I, I guess I could clear all this out. I don't want to hit delete. I'm feeling weird about it, but I'm going to do it just to prove the point that it doesn't matter. All right. So those are all gone. <laughs> And that's just the message that some of them were a chat, so which is fine. I really don't care. All right, so that, that's a way you can kind of get rid of emails. And the reason why I said switch to 100 is if your email was set at like 20, uh, I just deleted 100 and you would have just deleted 20. And then, um, you know, that's just going to take you a lot longer if you got thousands of emails. Um, so why clean out mailbox if there's no limit? Uh, well, so I don't actually clean out all my emails. Um, they're all nested in these labels, but I also have no issue finding anything because of them being organized. I mean, if you don't think there's an issue with it being organized, then I guess there is no reason to do that. But I think a lot of people, um, they, they can't really use their inbox um, because there's thousands and thousands of emails in there and they just kind of use it as, well, this is the last week of information and anything besides that, I hope to search and find it, right? Um, but for me, as I, I never had that issue. Like I just, I just go look at my email. I'm done at the end of the day and it feels great. Can you pull all unread emails to the top? Yeah, you can pull all unread emails. If you just click on the little drop down here, you can select unread. Um, that's the way that you can select unread. And then if you want in that settings gear, you can configure your inbox to, to bring up, uh, unread first. You can also do it from this little drop down. The hard thing about Gmail is there's a hundred ways to do everything, right? Uh, so right here, unread first. But if you're organized, once you get organized, all your unread are going to be at the top because you would have taken care of everything else. That's the goal. All right, got to stop on email or else I'm not even going to get to show you anything in Google Drive. It's just crazy. I told my dad I was running, my dad works in IT, and I said, like, we're, we're doing, like, a Google, organize your Google life. And my dad was like, what? what? I'm like, dad, there's a lot of files that he, like, didn't get it. So I felt kind of hated by my dad there. I was like, come on, dad, get on board. Maybe you should come. You might learn something. <laughs> All right, I'm going to jump over to my Google Drive. I'm going to show you a couple things to organize this. Um, and uh, I need to practice what I preach here but I'm trying, all right? This one's really hard for me. Google Drive's really hard to keep organized. If you feel that, if yours is like immaculate, well, you're probably not on here, but um, it's tough. So the first thing that you're gonna do to humble yourself, which this is really humbling to me, is you're gonna go to your Google Drive and you're just gonna search the word untitled. And you're gonna hit enter. And you're gonna look at all the stuff that po pops up. I can't spell when you type in, I really can't spell, when you type in untitled. Come on, I fixed it. I promise that's not how you spell untitled. All right, uh, again, if you can, if you feel like sifting through hundreds of untitled documents every time you need to find one, more power to you. But these documents to me, these slides, these sheets, I have no idea what they are. There's pictures in here that are untied. I don't even know what the picture is of, right? I don't know who is in it. I, I know nothing. I don't know how I'm ever going to use it. Oh, my gosh. It's because I spelled it wrong, like an absolute jabron. Yes, I meant untitled. Goodness. It's great. In front of 54 people, I cannot spell. And my computer's going so slow. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hopefully you're doing this on your screen and you're looking through all your untitled documents and you're like, wow, I don't know what any of this is. Or you're like, wow, I really missed that. I wish I would have titled that, right? And here's mine. It's a mess. I got like, it looks like math work. I don't even know from when. Bunch of videos 
Who knows? Like, how am I supposed to use this video? I have no idea what. It's humbling. This is very humbling for me, right? And I just keep scrolling, and I have a million untitled. So my first goal, <laughs> my first goal, if I was going to organize this, which is if this is a goal over the summer for me, is to go through every single one of these and either delete it, rename it, and then move it into a folder. That's my goal. It's going to be a pain. Um, sometimes it's better to just like throw caution to the wind and just select all control a and just drag it all the trash right but that's kind of risky but sometimes i like to live live a little bit on the edge there so that's my first tip on on google drive search untitled and uh and see what comes up all right my next one <laughs> yeah heather you can do owned by me there will be some that didn't come up that came up that weren't yours right and if you're like what is she talking about owned by me? If you click on the little arrow, you get a lot of search options here, right? So these are owned by anyone from anywhere. So if somebody shared with you an untitled document, you have that somewhere in your drive as well. Uh, you won't remove theirs unless you have editing access, then you will. So it will tell you that though. <laughs> um, If, if somebody has shared something with you and you have editing access, you would have had to add it to your drive for it to, uh, to be able to delete it. So I'm guessing you probably never added it and you can just get rid of that um, shortcut. All right. Uh, the settings gear in this one is really helpful too. A couple settings that you might want to enable that you, you haven't thought of before. Um, so the one for me, uh, I hate the quick access thing. It's like it's like Google thinks it knows what I want to use, but it's, it's never right. It's never what I want. So I, I got rid of that one. Um, I really like this important people and files and shared with me. Uh, brings up the people that share stuff with me the most often. Um, and it and ends up being like recent things. It's really helpful. I, I like that one a lot. And then priority. Um, priority is just a different view for Drive. And if you've never used it, you probably don't want to make it your default. I tried to do that earlier this year, and I, I, I didn't have a lot of success with keeping it organized. So I'm back to just normal drive. So a couple quick settings there that maybe you haven't thought of. Um, all right, now let me just go back into my drive here. And again, I only, I'm only going to talk for like five minutes on drive, so I apologize if you were really looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> but here's a couple things I want you to keep track of. It's way easier to share a drive folder than to create a shared drive with people and organize the permissions and make sure everybody is covered on that. So my first suggestion is if you're going to share documents with people, uh, just do it through a drive folder. That would be my first suggestion, all right? Um, you can use shared drives, but the permissions are different. People always end up being confused. People forget to look in shared drives, right, because it doesn't show up here. So then they're like, wait, where is it? So then they have to go to another thing. It's a great idea. I don't know if it practically it works as well as people want it to, right? All right, so that's my first suggestion. Share folders with people. Don't share drives with people, right? So just create a folder and then share it. If you're like, how do you share a folder, right? You just take whatever folder you want. So let's say my curriculum folder I wanted to share with people. And I just right-click or two-finger click, and I just click the share button, and it's going to pop open all the sharing permissions that uh, – you would see on any other Google app, like any doc or sheet or slide, right? And then I can go in and I can share the contents of the entire folder. The nice thing about sharing an entire folder is when you share that, then everything that goes into that folder gets shared with those people. So you don't really have to worry about it, right? And they just changed the way sharing permissions look. So if you're like, that's not what mine looks like, well, it is now, right? So I can change this link to Southwestern City Schools. Um, so then if people with Southwestern could get the link if they wanted, or I could add individual people in here like I could before, right? And then I can also change if they can edit, okay? So sharing permissions of entire folders, pretty cool. Um, I like my folders to be typically organized by name. If I'm really organized, if I'm on top of my Google Drive, my folders are in order by name. And again, I use the same Unicode numbers, right, and red, well, staff development in my email, staff development here, green, district info, green was DSC over in my email, 
right? BTC is blue in my email. Um, it, it really helps me stay on top of things. I've added emojis mainly during trainings. That's when I add emojis. I just show people how to add an emoji, right? Um, if you're like, how do you, when you create a new folder, all you have to do is hit new folder, right? Not folder upload, that, that's all uploading from your computer, but just new folder. And then once you have a folder, if you right click on it, you can change all the little settings on it, right? You can change, you can rename it so you can add in those numbers or, or emojis and you can pick colors. Now the colors here are not like in Gmail, you only have these colors. So that's, that's that. All right. Um, I would argue that if you have files that look like me down here, this is horrible. This is almost embarrassing. Like I thought I could organize it before this thing and I like can't, I just gotta, just gotta show the truth. Uh, these are like files that are impossible for me to look through. I mean, they're alphabetical, they're named, which is good, but like uh, my board visioning slides probably don't need to be in my files, right? I probably can just throw those in a folder somewhere. They can live in my DSC folder for as long as I work through DSC. And if I need them, I can search for them, but I probably don't need them down here. Um, when you have all these files down here, again, it just makes things harder for you to find. And you're just relying on this search bar and then you get really frustrated when you can't find it. And then you're wondering where it went. And then, yeah, it's a vicious cycle, right? So I would always encourage if you have a bunch of files down here, even if you create folders that you know are just kind of dumping grounds, you're at least eliminating that view. So when you get to Google Drive, it's organized and you're not like, I don't even know where to start, where to click, right? So if you wanna move things down here, you can uh, drag outside of the window, right? And you can get multiple things at once. So I can take all four of these things and put them in something, or I can just drag individual items into folders. Uh, you can select multiple files and delete them too. You can also select multiple files and just drag them over to the trash. Right, so if I want to get rid of all these, I can just go trash, all 10. And it will show you a little icon. I just pointed my screen like you guys could see me. I'm so dumb. <laughs> Do you see the little thing in the top right corner that says uh, 10? That's 10 files, right? We have unlimited storage in, in Drive as well. EDU accounts. So even if you've been making a 45 minute screencast every day for your kids for the past three months and your, your gigabytes are through the roof, it doesn't, it's, you're fine. Like just organize them. You know, if you don't want to get rid of them, I understand. And then I always try to organize things by date. Like that's really helpful for me. So like, like I, when I got my new job and a lot of us, you know, switch between grade level, we switch between schools. So then all the documentation is different. Right. And it really helps when you like, end a chapter of your career to put a folder around that whole thing and drop all the folders into it and then start fresh. Really helps, trust me. Uh, I, I tried to manage all my stuff with my old stuff at the beginning and it was horrible. So when I started fresh, it felt like I could I could keep everything organized and then if I ever need to, I can go back into my old, my old files and find things I need. So that, that's another little, and you can put as many folders inside of folders that you like, right? Um, the last thing, uh, so a lot of people are asking me like who, who viewed a document? How do I see who's on a document? How do I know who shared it and everything? So if you just have a random document and you don't want to click into it, you're just in your drive. If you right click on it, this is my last thing and then I'll be done. I'll answer a couple questions if we got them. Uh, and you click on view details right here. Uh, it'll show you who you shared it with. Uh, it'll also show you who started the file and then it will also show you who's viewed the file at any point right or if they edit it um so like i can see that on february 14th i shared it with these three people um and when when i was doing all the work right so um just another way where you can kind of view activity on a file if you're wondering if somebody has edited it or you know you're just looking through it um you can always do that you can do other things as well but just from drive that's kind of nice and then there's this list view. I don't really like it, but maybe if you if you're old school Windows or Mac user and you like 
the list of things, you don't like all those icons, you can switch. Somebody say Trello. Lauren, I don't, Trello got uh, installed today. I'm not really sure what it is. Sorry. I think I'm supposed to know everything, but I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I want to select multiple files, I'm going to go back to my grid view because I don't know. This is hard for me. Um, maybe. Uh, when you want to select multiple files, you can either hold down, uh, like if you hold down control and you click each file, it will let you do that. Um, but in Google Drive, it's really easy if you click outside of the little uh, thumbnail of it. So I'm just in the white space. And then I can drag and make a box, whatever size I would like. And then I, I can move those around. Drag, click, and hold. Any other questions? Sorry, there was more, actually, if you can believe that. I didn't get to it. I feel bad. We can just hang out, you know? Have a cut. Well, we can't even really do that. Uh, we can, you know. I can answer more questions if you got them though, but the real thing that, that I think is crucial for being able to organize is like come up with a system that makes sense in your brain and then uh, get everything cleared out so then that system makes sense. Because if you just start a new system but don't clear all the old stuff out, you're going to go back to your old habits. Um, I have to give you a survey link before you leave. Please, please just fill it out at some point. Uh, Kelly, shared with me, if I delete them, does it just delete my copy? Yeah, you don't actually have a copy in Shared With Me. So um, when you go into Shared With Me, uh, so, you know, I got all this stuff here. Like, these are all owned by these people. I have access to them, but until I um, actually, like, right-click on one and I can add the shortcut to my drive, I'm not actually doing anything to their file. Um, so in shared with me, um, you can move stuff to the trash, but, um, yeah, shared with me is kind of a mess too, right? If you can't find something, it's usually in, in shared with me. That's it. That's all I got for y'all. Cause it's 158. Hopefully you learned something. Sorry. I didn't get to it all. Stick around. If you got a question out, I'll, I'll answer it.